In this video, what I want to do is get you prepared for your math exam. If you have an exam coming up in around 30 days, then this video is going to help you get prepared. Now, I know a lot of you probably aren't planning ahead for your test 30 days in advance. You should, by the way. Let's say you have 20 days or even 10 days. You can still use this video to condense it down to whatever your needs are when your exam is coming up. But the main thing is this video is not a cram video. This is how you plan and execute studying for any math exam. So get out your notebook. Let's go ahead and take some notes and follow along along with my step-by-step -step process that I used when I was a student, also the way that I taught my own students to get prepared for their math exams when they were in my class. So the first thing we need to do is find that date when you are taking the exam. And yes, we need to map out every single day because every single day up to your exam is going to be critically important. And for every single day, we are going to have something to do. We're not taking any days off here. We are going to maximize every single day. Now, I am going to use this 30-day approach. What you'll see is if you have a couple less days, like 27 or 20, you can just condense or combine these together and just add extra time to be able to make sure you can do them. Now, the thing I like about using 30 days is we can do more things more often in less time, meaning we don't need to spend like hours every night studying for a math exam. In this example, when I give you a task for each day, that is going to include roughly around 15 to 30 minutes. And I think for a majority of students, that is definitely something feasible. So the earlier you start, the less time you have to set aside each and every day. All right, so now we got our notebook out, we wrote the date, and we know exactly how many days we have until our exam. Next thing we need to do is go and find our notes, our homework, our tests, and our quizzes. Hopefully your teacher gives those back to you. If not, your task is a little bit more difficult. But I, as a teacher, always gave back my tests and my quizzes and encouraged students to take really good rigorous notes, even though I also provided an online version. But whatever your circumstance, try to collect as much material as you need. And maybe if you only have a textbook or online resources, then bring that out as well. So the way that this process works is I'm basically going to break up your 30 days into five day segments. All right. And the first day is going to be on homework. The second day is on quizzes. The third day is on notes. The fourth day is on tests. And the fifth day is on reviews. And what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat this process over and over. Obviously, you're taking a semester exam. You're going to have less material compared to like a final exam. So the only adjustment you'd have to make is either expand this out longer for like 60 days or just use more time rather than maybe 30 minutes, you might have to do 60 minutes each and every day. But again, the main thing guys is we are going to be consistent every single day, 15 to 30 minutes, no cheat days. Consistency is the key. So assuming we have 30 days, and again, you can adjust this however you need. We're just going to repeat homework, quiz, notes, tests, and reviews, and write them down. So to dive a little bit deeper into the homework, what I want you to do is roughly get about three to four homeworks. Depending on how your class went, you might have a lot of homework assignments or maybe very little. But I usually think having about three to four homework assignments for you to review on these homework days is a good idea. And if you have a little bit less, you can just reuse them again. And if you have a lot of homework assignments, then maybe you have to do five or six, but hopefully that's not the case. Let's take out your homework assignments, three of them. Now, either they are corrected or you have the answers provided. And if that is not the case, make sure you use some online tools to maybe check some answers to make sure that anything you're reviewing is actually done correctly. So all I really want you to do for these homework assignments is just review the topics that you had to learn, that you had to review. Some of these topics you remember because they kept on coming up and up and up throughout the whole semester. Or sometimes they were just built upon and like what you were first learning was the foundational approach. But still go back, review the process, kind of put yourself back into the mindset of when you were first learning this concept, just to kind of refresh your brain with the material. It's also very important to go to your homework and try to remember what problems and what topics did you struggle with. Take a look at those problems. Take a look at the work they did. And maybe if there's something that you still don't remember how to do, go back and look for some extra examples. Now, what I'd also like you to do is kind of extract what you believe is the most important pieces of information from those homework assignments. So if there's maybe a very core concept that maybe you got right then, but you're like kind of a little forgot it, like put a star next to it. Or maybe there's some problems that you completely forgot how to do, or that's a real struggle. And if you had to do them again now, you would probably not know what to do. Put a star next to them. Anything that you feel is like the most important from your homework, you know, put a little star or put like a one, two, three, like one most important, two kind of important, three or so easy. I know how to do. I probably don't need to look at this again, right? Get a little ranking system or a star system, anything to kind of just make sure you highlight the most important information that you want to remember or that you want to review again before you take your test. We're not going to do a lot of hard work on our homework days. We just want to make sure we're reviewing the material and kind of organizing it for our brain. Now, the next day is going to be our our quizzes. And hopefully on like a semester course, you're typically going to have within like two or three tests. And hopefully on these quiz days, you should be working with one or two quizzes. Now, what I want you to do with the quiz, and again, this is hoping that you have your quiz corrected, or at least the answers provided.
excited. I always gave back my students the quizzes. But again, if this is not something you have, then make sure you get the answers or work with a tutor to make sure you know what you got right and what you got wrong, as well as the worked out solution. That is critically important for this day. So what we're going to do for the quizzes. Now, these were obviously very important problems that your instructor decided to assess you on. These problems are more likely to show up on your semester exam. Find some of those problems that you highlighted from your homework that showed up on your quiz. And even if you know how to do them, even if they feel like they're kind of simple, go back through the process, cover up the work that you did, and just try to work through them again. You don't have to redo the whole quiz. That's probably going to take too much time. Again, remember, we're trying to look for like 15 to 30 minutes here, but select some of those problems that maybe you haven't done in a really long time, or that you know is like, this is a really important process and just go through the motions again, right? This is kind of like going back to your fundamentals, practicing the basics. It's so important for your brain to kind of go back through some of these things. Maybe you can recall some of the things that you forgot about when you're first learning that topic. What's even more important is also going through the problems that you got wrong on the quiz. I cannot stress to you how important it is to redo all the problems that you got wrong. And maybe this will take up your 30 minutes. Maybe you might need 60 minutes. I don't know, but you should definitely make sure you can correct every single problem that you got wrong on your quiz. And this is really helpful. If you have the answer to your quiz, look at the answer, review it, study it, make sure you understand it. Then cover up the answer and try to work it out again and try to do the problem again. Now, if you don't make, get the right answer or you make a mistake, review the answer, review the worked out solution, see where you went wrong, get a new sheet of paper, cover it back up and then try the problem again. I used to do this when I would study for my exams and sometimes it would take me two to three times of working through a problem to finally get it right. But by working through the solution, I was teaching myself how to go through this process and to fix my errors that I kept on making. And this was critically important to helping with my learning. Now, again, just like we did for the quizzes, make sure you use either the ranking system, like a one, two, three, or a star system to highlight these problems that you got right that are super important or that you got wrong that you're kind of struggling with or that you want to make sure you can review again before you take that semester exam. Remember, we are a long way away from our exam. So everything we're doing now, we're going to have to go back through again before we take our test, but we don't want to review everything again. We just want to review a selected amount. Day number three is we're going to take our notes. So all the notes that you took in your class and what I want you to do is start rereading all of your notes. Now, this is probably going to be about five or 10 days. So you're not going to actually rework any of the problems like you did in the day before, but I want you to just start selecting and identifying the most important definitions, the most important formulas, and most important examples that your teacher provided to you. Obviously, if your teacher spent time teaching these problems inside of class. These are the same problems that probably showed up on your homework, on your quiz. They're going to show up on your test, which we'll do next, and eventually your final exam. So some of the problems are basic, right? When a teacher is introducing a concept and a little bit more advanced teaching you how different topics are connecting from one to another. But either way, kind of go back through that ranking system or go through that start system and just make sure you notate what is the most important information from those notes that you want to make sure that you can go over again before you take that quiz. Now for this day, we're going to do something a little bit different. Even though we're not going to do any math work, what we're actually going to do is take a lot of those examples that were already written out. We're going to take those definitions. We're going to take those formulas. And we're going to take a blank sheet of paper and start writing that information on that sheet of paper. This is what I call the cheat sheet. And it's my most famous and most effective studying tool. And the earlier and better you can create your cheat sheets, the better and more prepared you're going to be for any math test or math exam. You should have a cheat sheet for every single other math test. So this step would even be easier because then you would just condense all of your cheat sheets onto one cheat sheet. But that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take the notes from roughly five to seven class periods, and we're going to try to condense them as much as we can onto one single sheet of paper. We're only going to focus on the stuff that is the most important that we need to make sure that we can remember and review before we take our exam again because obviously your notes is probably a lot of information and we don't want to be shifting through all this paper the night before our exam. We want everything clean and concise on one sheet of paper. Now, typically I always recommend students for any type of test, semester exam or final exam that you only have a cheat sheet of one sheet of paper. That is just a filtering process. If you need to use two, that's fine, but cheat sheets do take a lot of time. So I do not want you to feel like you have to rewrite all of your notes on cheat sheets. That is not an effective strategy. You have to be able to filter down the most important information. So therefore, at least for a semester exam, you should be looking at one to a maximum of two cheat sheets. All right, now on day number three, you're gonna take a test. Now, I only want you to focus on one test here and typically within like a semester, you should have something like two to four tests that you were given, right? And again, it's all a variable guys on how your class was, but use the strategy, take a test right? And just like we did for the quizzes, review each and every problem. The problems you got right, the problems you got wrong. Start highlighting them as like a three, two, or one, like the most important, the least important, the problems that you got right. Try to do them again. You got them right on your test. Can you do them again? If they were to show up on your semester exam, would you still get them right? I can't tell you how many times students would get a problem right. I would give them the exact same problem on their exam and they would get it wrong. Right? And what that tells me is a lot of students were prepared for their test. Maybe they might have been cramming or doing some really condensed studying. So they're able to quickly recall the information 
but they didn't have a true understanding of the information. So therefore, when they needed to recall it on a semester exam or later in the year, they had completely forgotten the concept. So don't let that happen to you. Go back through some problems you got right. It might seem like it's basic and it's a waste of time, but it is building that muscle memory that you're going to want confidence walking into the exam with. Now, also, we got to do those problems that you got wrong. And maybe if you have your test, that's a multiple choice. This might be a little bit quicker and hopefully you can have the worked out solutions that you can kind of follow, but follow the same process redo all the problems you got wrong. And again, this might be something that's going to take you a lot longer than 15 to 30 minutes, especially if you got a lot of problems wrong. But if you can treat it as your goal to redo every single problem that you got right, even if it takes you two or three times of doing that, you know, covering it up and trying it again, this is going to serve you so well for your final exam. So give it a shot, please. Now on the fifth day, hopefully your teacher has given you some sort of review. And if they have not given you some sort of review, then you can go online and type pre-calculus semester review or calculus semester one review. Like there are tons of free reviews that are available online that you can go and follow or use as practice. So don't give me the excuse that your teacher does not provide you with their review. Go online and find one. A lot of teachers have their reviews provided with worked out solutions and video solutions. That is something that I always made sure my students were provided. In addition to that, I would give them reviews as well as a practice exam that they could do. That's what I want you to be doing on this day five is you're just doing practice problems. Go through whatever review that you're provided or given or a practice exam and just practice problems. Try to do as many as you can. Now you might have 30 practice problems. You might have a hundred practice problems. So well, however many you have, try to break them up evenly into five different days because we're going to do the cycle for five times. So if you have a hundred questions, then do 20 math questions. If you're only given 30 math questions at review, then do six questions, right? And again, adjust that how you need. Like if you feel like you need to do a lot more examples, then find more examples. If you've done fairly well up to this point, maybe keep it on the light side and just do like five examples, you know, keep it to like a 15 minute time limit. You don't want to overdo yourself. And again, remember we're staying consistent guys. We are not taking a break. Once we're done with the review day, what are we going to do? We're going to jump back due to our homework day and we're going to do another three to four new homework assignments. And then after we're done with the homework assignments, then when we're done with day six, we're going to go to day seven, which is going to do a quiz. And we're going to take another quiz and we're going to go ahead and do the exact same process. Then day eight, we're going to set another set of notes, five to seven days worth. And we're going to go ahead and review and add that information over to our cheat sheet. Then for day nine, we're going to take another test and again, review it just like we did for day four. And then day 10 comes up and guess what? We're going to go back through and practicing our problems. Again, 15 to 30 minutes worth, six to 20 problems worth. This is just a template for you to follow. But what I want you to do is spread this time out evenly and just stay consistent every single day. Now, once we're able to do the cycle for four times, that means we have 10 more days left. So in the final stretch, what we're going to do is we're going to go back through the whole process again, but we're just going to do things a little bit differently. Remember the homework on day one, day six, day 11, day 16. What I want you to do is go through those problems that you starred, go through those problems that were the one, two, threes, the problems you got wrong, the problems you got right. Those most important problems. You're like, I need to look at these again before I take my exam. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go back through all of our homework and we're just going to focus on those problems that we start. And now if the problem is something that we feel comfortable with and we don't really, and we feel like, all right, I kind of reviewed this enough. Like I'm good with this now. Then we'll just kind of leave it by its side. If we still feel it's something that is very important that we want to review one more time, maybe it's something that's a really kind of tricky concept, or we just know it's a very important process then what I want you to do is add that to your cheat sheet. Remember the cheat sheet you created for the notes section? We're going to take all that information and add it to our cheat sheet. So then on day 22, when you're going to go back through your quizzes, well, you should already be done with all your quizzes. So what are we going to do? Remember, I told you to start the problems that you got right that were really kind of important, or maybe the problems you got wrong. And again, go back through all of your quizzes again. And now what I want you to do is extract the ones that you feel are the most important that you want to review one more time and put those on your cheat sheet. Then it's going to be notes time. And again, here's just going to be time again, studying and working on your cheat sheet. Maybe you might need a little bit more time to adding some problems on your cheat sheet. Go back through, look at your notes, kind of see anything else that you can add or simplify or redo. Clean up your cheat sheet. The worst thing you can do right now is have a messy cheat sheet. Messy cheat sheets are not helpful. So sometimes I've had students that had to create two or three different variations of their cheat sheet because that's how messy they were. I hope that is not the case for you, but if you need to utilize some time of cleaning up your cheat sheet, day 23 is a great day to do that. All right, now we're going to work on day 24. Again, your test should be completely reviewed by now. So just like we did for quizzes and just like we did for homework, we're going to try to extract as many problems that we felt were the most important that we want to review one more time before our exam and put those on our cheat sheets. Write down the problem, write down the solution, write down the process that you had to follow. Even if you got the problem right or if you got the problem wrong, whatever you feel is like the most important that you need to kind of review and remember if it shows up on the semester. 
semester exam. And then day 25, guys, is again another review day. This is gonna be the last day of reviews. So that's why I said five times you should be doing your reviews because today is just like a work day. We're not only really working with our cheat sheet anymore, we're just practicing math problems. So again, any extra problems that you've been provided or that you need, today is one of those working days. All right, guys, now we're into our last week. And again, this last week needs to be light, guys. I don't want you to be feel overwhelmed or completely stressed out. And again, being realistic, I know there's probably other classes that you're actually studying for as well. So maybe for those other classes, this is a good time to cram. But for your math exam, you've already done all of this work the last five weeks. You should be super ready and prepared. I would still recommend maybe going back through and just practicing any of these problems that you got wrong. Just try to pick like three to five problems that you can take typically from your cheat sheet and just do them. Do them on a separate sheet of paper. Just make sure you're going through that motions. Now, again, from the five weeks prior, you might still have more homework problems that you need to review or add your cheat sheet. So this is a great week to do that. So for your homework, if there's any excess that you still need to do, go ahead and do that in this day. And also make sure you practice again, you know, maybe some three to five problems from those homework. Then it comes down to the quiz day. Find some problems from all your quizzes that you want to try one more time. Maybe you still have some problems you need to add to your cheat sheet. Go ahead and do that. For our notes day, what I would recommend doing is just either continue filling out your cheat sheet or maybe refining it. Maybe by doing all this information, you made like four cheat sheets. Well, I think that's a little bit too much. That's probably going to be overwhelming for you. So maybe try to spend some time in like reducing that content and really trying to refine it to exactly the stuff you need to know. For test day, you're going to do the same thing. Try to pick out a couple problems. Again, keep it light, three to five problems just to practice them. And then also go back, add anything else that you need to on your cheat sheet refine it and review your cheat sheet. Basically this whole week, you're going back through the whole motions. You're just keeping your workload really light. And after you do that workload, you're quickly reviewing your cheat sheet. So we're just doing a nice light review of our cheat sheet every single day this week. Because again, this is like coming up to your day of your test day. Then we have our review day. Now this is typically going to be like your last day before your test. So I would recommend on this one, you know, go back and review the problems you did. I don't really think you need to be practicing problems. Maybe you do. Maybe you need to spend a little bit more time going over those problems, but just look through all the practice problems you did. Spend some time reviewing and going over your cheat sheet because guys, the test is tomorrow and you've done all of this work up to this point to get yourself ready and prepared. You should be proud of yourself. You should have confidence that you have done everything that you possibly can do to be successful on your test. That is the mindset you need to have waking up tomorrow ready to take your exam. Now, studying for exam is one thing, but mentally getting prepared for your test is another thing. And if you wanna know how to be mentally prepared for your test, then go and check out this next video. Otherwise, best of luck on your exam and let me know down below how you did. Cheers.